Planet models, azimuth and altitude, and aboriginal views. Why are they important? Have you ever seen a star and wondered exactly how far away that star is, and exactly where it is placed in the universe? How about what kinds of stories are behind that star? Have you ever wondered where exactly the center of the universe is? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. This is Planet Models, Aboriginal Views, and Altitude and Azimuth in Plain English. So, before we start, you may be wondering how any of these things have to do with one another. They all are part of a bigger picture. Learning about them will help you connect them to each other, and understanding one helps you understand them all. We are going to start with planet models. Do you remember those annoying grade 3 projects where you had to drag your parents to Michael's to get styrofoam balls to make your space model? There was more to those models than you think. There are two different types of models, geocentric and heliocentric. Now, I know those are words that make you want to bash your head against the desk, but they are really simple concepts. Think of the word geocentric. Geo sort of sounds like geography. Geography reminds you of the Earth, right? Well, the geocentric model revolves around exactly that. In this model, the Earth is at the center of the solar system. The geocentric model was based on the idea from Aristotle, a Greek philosopher and polymath, or a really smart person. It was then changed by another Greek geographer and astronomer, Claudius Ptolemy. He added the idea that the planets not only revolve around the Earth, but they also spin on their own axis. That is why the geocentric model is sometimes also called the Ptolemaic model. The geocentric model has been used for almost 2,000 years. The second kind of model is the heliocentric model. The heliocentric model has the universe revolving around the Sun. It was developed by Nicholas Copernicus, a Renaissance mathematician and astronomer. The model was also improved on by Johannes Kepler, a German astronomer. He used his laws of planetary motion to prove that the planets moved in ellipses, or ovals, rather than circles. This helped develop Isaac Newton's theory of universal gravitation. Although the geocentric model was used for hundreds of years, the heliocentric did replace it in the 1500s. You may be wondering why it was replaced. Scientists began to see problems with it when they were conducting research, but it was never actually proven wrong. In fact, scientists still use both models today. Some even believe that neither of the models are correct and that the center of the universe is slightly beside the sun's core. Okay. Now that you know where scientists think the center of the universe is, let's talk about what aboriginals think about all this. The first aboriginal astronomers were in Australia. They had a few different legends about the universe. One was that the sun was carried across the sky by a woman called Wurian Pranili. She would wake up before dawn at her camp in the east to light a small fire. She would then light a torch with this fire and carry the torch across the sky. She arrived at her evening campsite in the west, and then traveled in a tunnel during the night to restart the process. Another Australian legend is about the moon. One night, there was a group of people who thought that the night needed to be lit up. They held a meeting and decided to throw a flaming boomerang into the sky to light up the night. All of them tried, but none of them could. Then an old wise man tried, and he got it to stay. That is how the moon became. Now, although these stories are from the earliest Aboriginal astronomers, why don't we look at one from North American Aboriginals? Some Aboriginal groups in North America believe that Ursa Major, or the Big Dipper, is a bear that is being hunted. It is running away from the hunters and it is wounded. Because it is so low in the sky in the autumn, its blood rubs off onto the leaves. That is why the leaves turn red in the fall. So, now that we know some stories about the sun, moon, and stars, we need to figure out how to actually locate them. There is a system called the Celestial Coordinate System that helps us do this. This system involves two different ways of measuring where an object is in space, azimuth and altitude. Azimuth is a measurement in degrees where an object is on the horizon. Let's say you were standing in the middle of a field facing north and you wanted to find the azimuth of the sun. The azimuth measurements are laid out in a circle. North is 0 degrees, 
east is 90 degrees, south is 180 degrees, and west is 270 degrees. Now, pretend to draw a 90 degree angle from the sun to the earth and then continue that line all the way towards your body. If you measure the angle from exact north to that line, that would be the angle of azimuth. It's easier if you imagine it like the circumference or the outside edge of a circle. Whatever point the sun lands on, that is the point that you measure the angle to. Altitude is much easier. It is simply the measurement of how far above the circle on the horizon an object is. Why don't we imagine you in a field again? To find the altitude of the sun, draw a line going straight from the sun to the ground below you. If the earth was flat, this angle is the angle of altitude. Altitude azimuth coordinates are when azimuth and altitude measurements are combined. It gives us a precise point of where exactly an object is in the sky related to where you stand. They are used so that we know the direction angle, which is the azimuth, and the height, which is the altitude, of any given object in the sky. So, how does this all fit together? The answer is pretty simple. It all has to do with where things are located in the sky. Planet models tell us where big objects, like the Earth, are positioned and how they move around one another. Aboriginal views tell us how they saw the universe and what kind of inferences they created. Celestial coordinates tell us how to find the distance between us and an object we see. They are all connected. I'm Miranda Schmidt, and this has been Planet Models, Aboriginal Views, and Celestial Coordinates in Plain English.